All right, just uh, go ahead and uh, talk about um, your dog life journey and how you ended up with the Corell and Bear Dogs. So Josh was the one that um, got Zuka first, and so I'll let him kind of start that off. Okay. Yeah, so I grew up in Montana hunting. Uh, we had labs and bird dogs growing up, and then I got an Alaskan Malmute in junior high. And I just really liked kind of the northern breeds, the pointy ears, the long fur, and the curly tail. Um, but I also liked hunting with our bird dogs, too. And then all those dogs died and went on to college. And when I would come back to hang with my brother-in-law, uh, he and I started hunting mountain lions with buddies who had hounds. Mm -hmm. And that type of hunting... Uh, really appealed to me and I really liked watching those hounds work and watching just how they would work as a pack and how they'd interact with their owner and just kind of the drive and the passion that those dogs had. Um, I joined the military and did a couple of deployments with single and so it, it was kind of hard to have a dog. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be home for about six months then gone for about six months and Coming home from one deployment, I just decided I wasn't going to wait any longer, and I wanted a dog. I didn't want a Malmute. Uh, they were too big, and they weren't necessarily hunting dogs. And So I was kind of looking for that in-between of a, of a hound dog, but not quite a hound dog, but one that was maybe uh, more affiliated with a northern breed and started, I guess, kind of looking at rare dog breeds, and Krillians were one of the ones that came up, and... Uh, I think their color scheme is probably what attracted mm -hmm. me the most to them. And then once I started reading about them and uh, the reasons that they were bred and the purposes for which they were bred, uh, I started looking for a breeder. I found a breeder who had pups um, who were going to be ready to go within a couple of weeks of me getting home and, and then Honestly, I think God had a big part of just kind of letting all the chips fall into the right place. And I got Suka within a week of getting home from deployment, and the rest has been kind of history from there. What are some of the uh, the differences that you've seen uh, with these dogs compared to the other dogs that you've had in the past? I would say Suka... I say labs and my sister has German shepherds. I have a lot of friends that have German shepherds. I've worked a lot with military working dogs, which is typically shepherds, Malinois, Dutchies. And most of the dogs, even including Malamutes to some extent, are very inwardly focused. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're out and about with them, they're, they're very much focused inward on the owner and um, and they want to be with you and they stay very close to you. And I think just kind of my personality of being a little more independent. Uh, one thing that appealed to me about Corellians is Corellians are very outward focused dogs and they still stay connected with their handler or their owner, especially when they're hunting. Um, but almost all the time, Suka is focused. Um, j she's just focused out and she'll come and she'll check in with us. Um, but that's just kind of to like get a bearing on where we are. And then she's, she's headed out again to hunt, um, or to run or play or do whatever she's doing. And, and I just really appreciate of just not having a dog that needs me to give it a direction and having a dog that, that can kind of do its job with very little instruction. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that the, the, these dogs hunt? Uh, so they originated in Finland. They they used them for just about anything. Uh, rodent control was a big thing, especially like in and around their settlements. And then they also use them for big game. Uh, they use them for moose, which they call elk mm -hmm. over there. They use them for bears, uh, hogs, fox, badger. Um, and the... The hunters that I know in the States, there's one guy in British Columbia who uses them for cats, um, being bobcats, lynx, lions, grizzlies, and black bear. Um, and 
and then there's and most of the other people that I know use them solely for black clears. Mm-hmm. And is that kind of the big thing that you, you like to use them for? Or? That that is our intention. Yeah, uh, Suka is four, mm-hmm. and each hunting season, I've either I've been away with my job, and so we're kind of hoping that this will be our first hunting our first season that we'll actually be able to get up into the Appalachians and spend some time and, and just see how she does. We've been able to connect with kind of trying to blend that hound hunting world of the South and, you know, the bear, you know, the one-on-one bear hunting of the North and, um, been able to connect with some houndsmen down here who are kind of willing to show us the ropes and, um, willing to let us use our Carillion, um, for that. So we're looking forward to, to starting that experience down here. Right. So they're with the foundation stock service. Mm-hmm. So they're not technically AKC, they're foundation stock service, but they fall under the veil of AKC. Mm-hmm. We do, she is UKC registered and we haven't explored uh, if we could register with the Canadian Kennel Club or not, um, I don't know. I don't know if they would. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know if they would or not. Um, they're they're just a relatively new breed to the states, and there aren't many people who who have them or know about them. No, exactly. Yeah, so trying to remember the difference or the conversion from kilograms to pounds and centimeters to inches. Weight for females is. Ideal is like 40 to 50, and for males, it's 50 to 60. Uh, I think height for females is 22 to 26, and males is maybe 24 to 28 inches. Um, but, but yeah, I, I wouldn't quote, quote me on that. That would be a, a quick Google search to confirm those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a roundabout. What, are you, yeah. what kind of standard are you looking for with your program? Uh, we we're looking to fit within the standard as closely as possible. Um, obviously, you'll have some outliers here and there. Uh, with a lot of the reading and the studying that I've I've done about breeding and and just dogs in general, as dogs were were bred for very specific purposes, and usually the physical characteristics that they that are that they're endowed with. Um, coincide with the purpose that they're bred for and so i've just read that as soon as you kind of start getting away from those standards you're kind of getting away from the breeders or like the the founders of the breed's original intention and how to utilize that dog Mm -hmm. and so some of like the characteristics or the um just the yeah the characteristics that those dogs would have just may not be as sharp as what the original founders of the breed wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be looking to maintain breed standards as closely as possible. Um, but also understanding that what we're first looking for is, or breeding for is dogs that will hunt. Um, we're, we're more concerned with the dog that will perform its job and the job that it was bred for and, and then trust in, and kind of the founders of the breed in that once once the purpose is met then the characteristics of a physical appearance will be there as well right uh so i think that the only issue that the carillions are dealing with right now is it's a recessive genetic mutation that um basically causes dwarfism in the puppies it's chondroplasia to some extent or another uh and they just had a big flare of it in Finland pop up, and I think that was kind of due to a lot of a lot of line breeding mm-hmm. and and them not a lot of kennels not being willing to to breed or to outbreed, and thus they kind of condense their gene pools a little too much. Right. Uh, and obviously, uh, detached retina is is a. Um, is an eye issue we you have to look out for carillions and then hips and elbows but that i mean that's for any dog yeah absolutely yeah absolutely so carillia is um it'd be kind of what we would consider uh it'd be like the appalachians it's it's an area that kind of straddles uh russia and finland eastern carillia is in russia 
and Western Karelia is in Finland. Um, at one point, uh, during all the wars that were fought in Europe, Russia controlled all of Karelia and then Finland got some of it back. Um, and so that is actually where you get the split of the, uh, and I, I think I might butcher this pronunciation, but the Russian Lakey or Leica and okay. the Karelian Kirkdog. They're two very similar looking dogs, um, but Karelians have more of a boxy face and uh, Russian, the Russian breeds and lions have more of a, a pointed face. Uh-huh. Uh, but they're originally bred for, uh, and I'm pulling this off of uh, Niels Peterson. He's a, He's a guy who actually uses Karelians up in Alaska for bear work. He's a bear biologist. Um, what he states is that they were originally bred for rodent control around the settlement to pull uh, sleds uh, to hunt and also just for protection. Mm-hmm. And so they're they're rather they're a very multi purpose dog. Um, and the the fins they're and they're kind of a the people that started them, the Karelians that started them, uh, they're mostly peasants. And so they needed a very multi-purpose dog. And they also kind of wanted a dog that was a lot more primitive. Um, and so I think the breed was established in the fifties. Uh, and I forget how many original Karelians were registered. And then, oh, and I can't tell you the exact numbers, but I think, um, I think, Maybe 900 new dogs are registered every year in Finland, um, but but yeah, I'm I'm not too certain on how exact those numbers are. Right. It's actually pretty awesome. They they're using them for search and rescue. Um, people, there's a few people I know that have had success with them using them in scent trials uh, for the UKC or the AKC. Um, Suka is it. It's one of the most agile dogs um, for kind of her body build that mm-hmm. that we've ever seen. And then Koba, the male that we bred her to in Montana, he he is very agile. And so I would not be surprised if there's people that use them in agility um, tests and, um, and competing. And then what they're primarily used for in Alaska and especially out west is uh, bear bear management and bear conflict control. Uh, we have worked a lot with Kerry Hunt out of Wind River Bear Institute in Florence, Montana. Um, she has been breeding Karelians and using them to what she calls bear shepherd, grizzlies, and black bears, and sometimes mountain lions if need be. And that's basically gr- bears will get accustomed to uh, eating human food and um, and they'll get desensitized to being close to humans and thus they kind of become dangerous to humans. And so what they'll do is they'll tranquilize the bears. Uh, they'll put them in a cage of where they frequently visit in human areas. They'll release them, throw flashbangs at them, shoot them with bean bags, and then turn the Karelians loose on them and chase the bears away. And that's, that's better than relocating them uh, because relocation usually fails most of the time either the bear bear gets killed by a bigger bear in the area that they get relocated or the bear returns to its problem area um but using the Karelians has actually they've had huge amounts of success with that um and so i know from what i understand carrie was the first woman to kind of pioneer that and since then there's a lot of people that have started using them out west um for that bear management which i think is super essential just for conservation and hunting and understanding how we as humans like live with the wildlife that uh, we come in contact with every day. Right. But they, they were saying that these dogs were very serious and uh, not always handler friendly. Is that true or could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Suka doesn't have a job. She's not a very happy, happy puppy. Right. And so... Uh, they're very handler friendly if the handler knows what they're doing right. and if the handler is in control. Um, they're, I would say they're kind of a stubborn breed and they're a very independent breed, um, which I just like a lot. And I think Faith likes a lot too. We're 
kind of both independent in our own sense. And so it's work, it's learning how to understand, honor, and respect that independence, but then also lead it as well. Right. Another thing that's interesting is um, she can tell the difference. And, you know, Josh and I, and when we take her on walks and runs, and when it when Josh takes her, she is a lot more independent and will go farther and longer before coming in and checking back in with us. Um, and then when it's just me, it's interesting that she can tell that difference. Um, and she'll come and check in more frequently. Wow. So, you know, it's a matter of, of building trust and, and, again, just being – a good handler and and having that control and having that um that stern voice i know in the beginning when i was trying to learn how to give her commands i would you know be nervous to be you know stern or say them the way they were supposed to be said um because josh has actually (laughs) trained her in arabic and so i was embarrassed to say those words and all that but um once i kind of got past that and was just being able to be confident enough to you know be as assertive as i needed to be Mm -hmm. it kind of changed the game as far as how she interacted with me so right interesting yeah so in regards to human interaction she is She's kind of indifferent. Um, if someone comes to the home, she is mm-hmm. happy as can be to, to see them unless mm-hmm. unless they surprise us and her. Uh-huh. Um, and then you get all 45 pounds of anger, barking, mm-hmm. right. fear that, that she can unleash. Uh, when we're in, in this, like at nighttime, if, when I let her out to go to the bathroom, uh, if she thinks that there's something in the woods, she's going to run back into the woods and make sure that whatever is yeah. back there is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she comes back with a big goofy grin on her face and just, just kind of like, aren't you a happy mom and dad? Like, I scared them away. I don't know what it was, but yes. they're gone. <laughs> um, but in regards in regards to people, when we're away from the home, she's kind of indifferent. She just wants to hunt and chase. Um, and so if we're out on the trails – like other people's dogs will stop and like they want to sniff you or, or do whatever. And she just runs right by people. She just right. doesn't really care and, right. or doesn't even really care about other dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would say that her, her ability to decipher is the decipher what is threatening and what is not threatening mm-hmm. is, is pretty acute. Um, right. She's not just going to bark at anything. It, it has to, display aggressive intent um and then and then it's it's pretty quick that that instinct kid kicks in but she's not a i would say she's a false guard dog mm-hmm. like a lot of guard dogs are right, right. she's also just she's very good at i think picking up on our reaction to things and so like josh was saying if we're surprised by something or if she can sense that we're afraid of something then so is she mm-hmm. um and then she goes into that protection mode. But um, pretty much, you know, for the most part, when she's with us and, it, like, say a friend comes over that she's never met before, um, we have never experienced her be aggressive in any way towards that. If she can tell that we know that this is safe. Right. Yeah. She's also, she's super good with kids, too. Mm-hmm. Faith has, she's the oldest of eight, and so her youngest sibling is two and mm-hmm. a half. Mm-hmm. And when those younger kids come up to her, she just rolls over onto her back <laughs> and they yeah. saw the, all the pets and the cuddles. So, right. That's pretty great. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you see uh, a Karelian bear dog doing maybe some, um, IPO and some bite work? Uh, I, I've tried to do that with her. Like I bought the, whatever material it is. Um, like I bought the puppy trainers when she was a puppy, Mm -hmm. um, I work in, uh, I bought like a a biting pad almost. And I don't, I don't know if it's just her, but I don't think they have a very strong bite. Um, and at least not compared to like German shepherds, like German shepherds or, or just most, most friends, my friends and family have German shepherds and like those dogs will latch on and, and then they're on it for good where kind of the way the, the Karelians were, were bred is they're bred to hunt in pairs mm-hmm. and they're bred that there's a tail dog and there's a head dog. And 
they're supposed to bay whatever animal they're hunting. And so baying means that they're kind of biting heels and, and just kind of nipping at the nose, but they're not biting on, they're not biting to hold on to, right. uh, cause that's where they get hurt. Mm-hmm. And so I think due to that, her instinct is like, yeah, I'll bite this, but I'm not going to hold on to it and I'm going to let go and back away. Um, and, and keep whatever it is I'm biting right here so it doesn't run away. Uh, and so, so potentially, but I, I think, yeah, yeah, I think whoever would want to maybe do that, they'd have to be pretty specific on, on picking their puppies and then maybe try to breed towards that. Um, but, but yeah, I don't, I don't see Suka being able to do that. And I kind of dabbled in that a little bit and, Uh, I'd have to talk to other KBD owners and see if they have kind of experienced the same thing that their dogs won't hold on to um, play toys with a strong bite. I feel more than capable that I could deploy right now and mm-hmm. Suka would know if, if there was a dangerous situation and she needed to protect Faith. Like, I, I have full confidence in her that she would do that. Yeah. Um, but to try and get her to do that you know it in an aggressive manner towards mm-hmm. humans and not a defensive manner uh yeah i don't know that would i yeah i, I guess i would be just as interested as you yeah. to see if uh if if the kbds would be able to do that or not right, right. so we keep her on pre pro plan mm-hmm. uh my uncle is a vet and he he runs some competing golden labs and that's what he feeds them uh i've with other podcasts that i've listened to and other research that i've done uh i have a lot of respect for the amount of research that perina puts into um into their plans and into their diets um we did have her on some of the like grain free ones until that those articles hit of the grain free diets causing heart disease later on in life in yeah. dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we backed away from that and, um, Oh, I forget who I was listening to, but when she's in her super active mode, I try to, or we try to give her some raw meat. Um, like if if she's putting a lot of miles on, uh, we just try to supplement some of that that dry food with uh, raw food, mm-hmm. um, and kind of give her just a little extra boost. Um, and also because I think in the the genetic sort of things that KBDs are are a little closer to wolves in in their genetic makeup. And I'm I'm no geneticist, so right. don't don't hold me to this, but they're just a little closer in, in appearance and, and diets than a lot of other breeds are. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, she's always done really well with that. That was one thing that really sold me on, on the KBDs was like, I I wanted to breed my Malmute because I was a kid and I loved that dog. Mm -hmm. But we went and we got her. She was, I think we got her for three or four hundred dollars, and we went in and got her hips tested, and her her hips were terrible, and she she basically should have never been bred. Um, she was a good dog. I mean, she was a good pet, uh, but after that, and kind of having that that heartbreak as a teenager of being told that your dog is genetically just shouldn't reproduce. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of dead set on like, so what's a breed that is good and and that is kind of pure and that is kind of uncorrupted because you walk around and you'll see, you'll see so many Huskies that don't even look like it. Husky should look like they're tall and lanky or, or their coloring's off or, and you, or German shepherds are another one that you'll just see some German shepherds that you're like, man, like I can just tell that that's not a healthy dog. Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate because, like, 
and, and not to, not to say that those dogs can't make good pets, but but then like the burden that they can cause with the health problems is is just a whole other thing. And so I just wanted a dog that I knew the breed for the most part was was rather pure, and the genetic problems that they had were were few and far between. And uh, and so I don't know. Or yeah, I just wanted one that. I guess wasn't really in America because America is so good at finding something that's small and unique and then capitalizing on it and mass producing it and kind of settled on the Karelians and have so far we've been extremely satisfied with Suka's health and then also the health of uh, a lot of other Karelians that we've come in contact with. Right, right. And this is your first litter. Kind of talk about that. What? Uh... Who is the the sire and all that? Yeah, his name, oh. His full name? Yeah. <laughs> he I'll, goes by Koba. I'll let Faith talk about him for a little bit while I get his full name. Yeah, yeah. no, um, he was great. We came in contact with him through Carrie Hunt, who we've done work with. And as I do work with, we Suka went through her program, and we went out there and did some training with her um, and kind of became friends with her. And so we knew we were going to do a litter with Suka, um, this heat cycle, and we're looking for uh, someone to breed with. And she recommended him. He's young. I think he's, is he 15 months old? Uh, he should be 16 16 months months old, something like that. But yeah, he's young. Um, he does bear work. Like we were talking about, um, Mm -hmm. that bear management, bear conflict, um, out in Montana. Um, yeah, I'll let Josh kind of take it from there as far as what else he does. Yeah, his full name is Koba Wachipi, <laughs> which is Lakota Sioux. Okay. Uh, his owner is his owner's name is Jorn Geese. Uh, he he's Lakota Sioux and he lives on the Flathead Reservation in Montana right now. And okay. he he's been around bear since he was a kid and has always wanted to. And he said he owned a KBD when he was a kid. And so finally got Koba was his first KBD that he's had as an adult. And he's had Koba on all sorts of bears. They're kind of up to their neck in bears right. up there in that, the Rockies. Yeah. And especially grizzly bear, the grizzly bear population is flourishing up there. So they're starting to have more and more encounters with those. And okay. so yeah, Koba's young. He has a fantastic nose. Um, he is one of the quickest KBDs that I've ever seen. Uh, he, Jorn, probably gets seven to ten miles of running on Koba every single day. It's pretty impressive. Um, and he he's a good size. He hasn't quite filled out yet. Um, KBDs are slower in their development, and so they're usually not um, done full, or they're not fully grown and filled out till they're 24 to 28 months. Um, and, and Koba's, let's see, it'd be Koba's great grandfather, um, was from the breeder Tatiana de la Forte, I think. So Koba's great grandfather won the European confirmation for KBDs, uh, in 2015, maybe 2000, within the past five, ten years. And so Koba comes from really, really good lineage. Um, and Suka has really good, uh, Finnish and, um, Finnish and Swedish hunting championship lineage. Okay. And so, uh, we're, we're pretty excited about, about what their puppies are going to do and what their puppies are going to look like. And Carrie is, um, she's super excited about it too. She, she was kind of the, the catalyst that made this all work out. Like they said, she got us all connected and, um, we don't all, the three of us, uh, being Carrie, Jordan and Faith and I, we don't all have the same common, um, I guess end goal with the mm-hmm. dogs, mm-hmm. but the, the love that we have for the KBB, KBDs and the kind of that foundational, uh, purpose and characteristic that they have, uh, we all share. So, right. Awesome. I I haven't been to any, but from my understanding, a lot of the the Scandinavian kennels, the dogs are kept outside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're outside in their kennels, and like each dog has their own dog house. But they're they are the hounds of 
Scandinavia. And so just like a lot of houndsmen in the South, not many of them bring their dogs into their house. It's, it's the same up there. And so those dogs are hardy because they have to be hardy because they live in a hardy yeah. part of the world. Exactly. And, yeah. and so, and they're working dogs more than yeah. pets. I mean, mm-hmm. um, and they're pets as well, but those dogs hunt, right? They have life. a job and, and they fulfill that job, they get rewarded. And so that's kind of how the, those relationships tend to work. Mm-hmm. Now, how does the KPD do well in, in, in the humid weather? So, Suka, she'll usually lose her coat um, a lot quicker before uh, her northern living counterparts uh, <laughs> yeah. that I talk to. And... Um, and like middle of Tennessee or middle of July in Tennessee, she she'll slim down a lot more. Like she'll put on a lot more weight in the winter. Uh-huh. Um, but in the middle of in the middle of July, my runs with her, if I'm not running her really early in the morning or like at daybreak, I either have to carry a lot of water with me or I don't run her very far. Um, or I run right next to a river or a stream that she can jump into and cool off. And um, just because she'll get so hot and be just being black, like that black coat just soaks up all the heat. Right. Uh, whereas when I've left her in Montana on deployments or we've been up there visiting in Christmas, it'll be negative 30 degrees out and she doesn't want to come into the garage because she's content as a bug. I bet. This- <laughs> so we do bring her inside. Um, it, in Nashville, um, it gets pretty hot, so she's she's an indoor dog as well. Yeah, 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 no doubt. <clears throat> Here's a question I asked everybody, just kind of just my personality and mindset. But uh, what are some of the breeds of dogs that that interest you the most that you've never had firsthand uh, experience with? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, have you ever heard of the Canaan dog? Uh, say that again. Uh, Canaan. And so I think it's one of the oldest breeds. It's K-A-N-A-A-N. Uh, yes. they dated back, yeah, to like the Israelite yeah. day and age. Yeah. Um, so that breed has always interested me, uh, just reading the Bible, especially the Old Testament, a bunch as a kid, and just knowing that I've been over uh, to that part of the world once or twice, and uh, and just seeing kind of remnants of some of those dogs has been pretty cool. Uh, the Kurdish Kangal, or the Anatolia Shepherd, or the Turkish, uh, what is it, the Turkish Kangal, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that dog, I love those dogs. Those dogs are pretty sweet. I've um, I've come in contact with a few of them over there, but never been like been able to work with them. Um, and then I would say a lot of the Spitz breeds, the it's the FCI Class Five Spitz breeds. Mm-hmm. So like the Norwegian Elkhund and the Russian Lakey, and there's uh, there's a bunch of others with kind of funky names that are just kind of those northern wolf like breeds yeah. uh, that really pique my interest yeah. I, don't know. I think the I don't know much about them but Akitas I've always thought were just like so striking yeah, and beautiful yeah. um, so I'd be I'd, yeah would love to learn more about them for yeah. sure I'm a you know I'm like a bull, bull breed and then I'm also a, a, a toy dog I grew up with pugs okay. and, and now I have a Shih Tzu which, oh yeah yeah and I love those I mean I never I got it for my wife but I that dog is is uh, yeah. connected it to my hip and I love I they just got great personalities what little dogs do you guys like um let's see my um great aunt and uncle they have a, I think it's a, a teacup poodle I think okay. um, she's so tiny and it's so interesting they um they've had three of them and they look you know pretty long and each time that um that one passes away they get a new one that looks exactly like the old one so Mm -hmm. in my mind they've had the same dog for like 
ever, you know, <laughs> but it's really been three different ones. Um, and I know they love her and treat her like a child. So yeah. I think that's a pretty special bond that's kind of fun to watch. Um, they also have that same great right. aunt and uncle. They also have beagles. Right. And we were able to go on our first, or I was able to go on my first rabbit hunt maybe two or three weekends ago. And I've always thought, like, beagles were kind of, I was associated, like, a beagle with Fox and the Hound. Right. Um, and so I always thought they were a cool dog because what little uh, kid doesn't think the Fox and the Hound dog isn't cool. Right. Um, but they were, that was a blast watching those dogs work rabbits and basically just do what their bigger brothers and sisters do except on smaller game. Um, and it's fun to watch the difference in those dogs and then their teacup poodle because yeah. the, the, those dogs now are out chasing rabbits, doing their job, and then she's inside, you know, and she's, like, treated like royalty. It's so, it's so right, cute. Right. Uh, terriers, I've all, terriers are pretty sweet. I think just they were bred for hunting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and just the fight that some of those little guys will have in them is pretty impressive. Yeah. They'll go up against a big dog and not even think twice. No. No, definitely. Oh. I feel the same way. Beagles are interesting to me. You bring them up that I've, I've kind of started to reconsider my, um, one of my first dogs that my mom told me was mine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Was a, a Beagle Welch Corgi mix and, Oh wow! He was a great dog. I, I yeah, I, I bet. I wish I would have, you know, had more insight on on that and 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 done some more things with him. But uh, the other beagles that I've been around haven't been interesting to me because they've been more pet dogs. Oh yeah. And I so I just looked at them as kind of like these ferocious eaters that bark all the time. <laughs> and get fat and lay on the couch and then get cranky and so I just uh, kind of but then I've seen some videos and talked to some people and and uh, the ones that are actually out there doing some work are amazing dogs from what I hear yeah. absolutely and and also from also what I hear they're tough as nails like they're they're yeah uh, put through briar tougher. patches and yeah. Run the swamp and yeah, yeah. They're I'll go through anything to get the rabbit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Most definitely. Well, I'll wrap it up here. Is there anything else you guys want to convey or? Um, I mean, yeah. So, kind of back to your one question about handling. Uh, we. I wouldn't recommend a KBD for someone who doesn't have a pretty extensive history in, in handling dogs. Uh, they will frustrate you to no end. Okay. Like there, there was a day where Suka as a puppy finally realized that she was faster than me. Uh-huh. And, and ever since then it has been me like always trying to ensure that I'm one step ahead of her in discipline and mm-hmm. and firmness and handling and ensuring that she knows that I'm still in control. Um, and that that can be super frustrating at times, but it all it also can be extremely rewarding when the two of you click and you start driving and and she knows what her job is and you know what your job is and and you start working together really well as a team um but to get there is is a lot and a lot of work and and she's a great pet but i mean even more than that like she's good at doing her job right um and so if yeah if they don't have a job uh and the times where like i've gotten busy or both faith and i've been busy and, and we haven't been to work been able to work with her as much she'll kind of start to drive us crazy and mm-hmm. like she'll, she'll chase her tail for 15 minutes in the living room, just okay. spinning in circles uh, mm-hmm. because she has so much energy that she needs to get out. And so it is, yeah, they are, they're not for the, for the weak at heart for sure. Right. But that's also 
one of the reasons why they're such incredible animals. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I, another question, Pavel. You plan on uh, how many pups do you plan on keeping back? With this we'll one? keep um, one for sure from this litter. Um, we're looking to have another strong female to pair with Suka and to continue our lines with. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Um, I guess, yeah, just for this litter, just one. Mm-hmm. Um, but just depending on how many we have and then, um, how the future litters go, unless there's another one that we just can't turn down. Um, we're, you know, really passionate about finding owners and pairing them very carefully and, um, helping people understand the dog better and, um, finding, finding just the right match, um, for this breed is kind of what we're passionate about. So, um, you know, in hunting and with bear hunting that, you know, we're looking to do more of, it's sort of a two or three dog thing. It's not like where hounds, you know, here in the South will put 10 to 15 dogs on a bear. Um, it's, it's two or three with Carillions. And so if we get that dream team going with them, then that's kind of what our goal is. So, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, Sean, we really appreciate you reaching out. Yeah. And being just curious and wanting yeah. to learn more Absolutely. and inquisitive. And well, that. I, I kind of liked what you guys were saying, too. Just, you know, you kind of seem like a humble couple, and and uh, I appreciate your faith and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. I think it, we it, it kind of lends well for – reputable people in this kind of crazy dog world so right yeah absolutely yeah. thank you mm-hmm. so yeah so it's proverbs twelve ten, it, and it just says the righteous care for the needs of their animals and we just think that's super important yeah and then god gave us all of our animals and i mean that was kind of the first commandment he gave adam was i've made all these incredible creatures and i want you to take care of them and take care of them well and so we just think that is extremely important and that that's kind of a commandment and that's something that we need to live by and ensure that our animals are cared for and provided for. And also, I think it speaks a lot to the character of people, you know, how you treat animals and not and not so much even just treating them, but if you're going to get into this business of reproducing them, not even so, you know, responsibly and correctly. And um, something that I've, I've just very quickly realized is that there's a correct way and there's an easy way, and they're never yeah. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. Um, as far as, you know, all the testing and all, you know, the details and the nitty-gritty of everything, um, I think that just speaks a lot to, you know, to the character of someone that they're willing to, to go through that. So, um we just really enjoyed having a ton of fun with it, learning a lot, you know, trying to keep open minds and hearts and being willing to take any advice we get. Um, we're, you know, first timers at this. So um, if anything that we said was just like way off or wrong, you know, anyone is willing to call us out. Um, but um, we appreciate you having fun. I appreciate, you know, asking us this. We feel like it's all we talk about sometimes. So our family and friends are probably like, oh, we get it. We get it. Um, <laughs> It's been fun having having someone, you know, ask these kinds of questions, so we really appreciate it.